Hey there, everyone. I hope you are all doing good. Today, we are going to take a look at the 880. I've been charged by Jeff from System80 to make the video manual for this awesome Eurorack version of the TR-808. We are just going to focus on the module itself and we are basically just going to forget about the enclosure because it's an optional thing. Today we are just going to take a dive into the module. Let's play some pattern first. So the first thing you want to do, I guess, is to write a pattern. Before doing so, I will make sure that there's nothing in all those patterns in this bank. So I'm going to go to the clear mode, select pattern 1, clear, clear, clear. Okay, now let's go to first part. We play the pattern and there's nothing. So this works exactly like the original TR-808, except that there's no rotary potentiometer to choose the instruments. Instead, you have those little buttons. So let's go for the bass drum. Snare drum. You can choose to enter instruments with the tap button instead. Be cool. Yeah, it's just something you just make cool rhythm in no time with this thing. So here we are in the first part on basic variation A. The basic way to make a um, more than 16 step pattern is to use variation B. So if we click here, we are going there. Oh, there was something. Why is there something in there? Maybe I didn't clean it properly. Anyway, from here, while this is playing, if we press clear and this, it will copy what we have in A into B, which makes it even easier to change this pattern into something different. Go to A, add some accent, back to B. From here you can decide to alternate a and B by tapping shift and basic variation button. So now you have the 32 step pattern. Let's start again on pattern 2. In this one there's nothing. There is something in variation B. Both need to be activated to be deleted at the same time. Otherwise you can delete one after the other. Just make sure everything is cleared everywhere. Now let's, let's just go on A.
seem easy. I could also decide to have a shorter pattern. Or actually, a longer pattern. If we go to second part here, we can press clear and the last one, and we have 32 step. This can also be used to create more weird sequence. Like uneven patterns and stuff like this. And the first and second part will be copied to variation B as well. So if we go to variation B, second part. weird pattern. Another difference from the classic machine is that you can like on the original, you have a switch between low tom and low conga and all those double sounds. Here, you can sequence the two actually. And this is just a priority. Like the top one will play if there is different steps on it is quite convenient. There's only one thing that's quite um, hard to remember with this is that when you start muting stuff you have to uh, you mute one then the other one then you unmute both. But it's a bit of a yeah you get you have to get used to it. So now there is the um, scale here. So you can change the scale by pressing shift and clear. To be honest, I've basically never ever used anything else than this one. Maybe I'm missing something, but anyway. You know, if we go to the manual play mode, we can play back our pattern. Either just A or just B. Or the two alternating. This, this one's pretty weird. Okay, let's go back. This, we are going to start fresh here. I like to start fresh. Remember to cancel this. We're going to make a simple beat. So from this I can show you if you want to continue on top of this using different patterns that you can trigger easily. You can, when you're there, the sequence is stopped, press clear, and another one. And I've copied what was on this one, which was selected, into this one. So now I can add some stuff into this one. Okay, like that. Selected, clear, copy. Again, it's 
no, manual play. While this is playing, we can mute stuff. We can select the sound and roll stuff. So roll is, you select the sound, pressing this, rim shot, then shift, roll, and these are the frequency of the roll, and stop here. You might have noticed that there is a swing setting, a shuffle setting. This is straight, this is super loose. Which remind me, there's one thing I haven't showed you. When you are not using the second part as a continuation of the first one, you can put step in there, which will actually be in between the steps of the first part. It sounds weird, but here you go. fun. I like it. Because it seems not many people use that second part on the original. So uh, one thing that worth nothing is that you can navigate through this quite easily. It always go in one direction but if you press shift can go to the other direction, go back to the place where you can edit the thing. Now, one thing that is also like on the original, that feel intro and feel option. So I'll explain you how it works. So when you are in the pattern write mode, you can write pattern in those four white thing. So let's go for... This one will be If you play those like this I mean it's like other patterns but their mean is that in the manual play mode you can have your pattern playing And here, you can see it's, those are lightened up as well. So those, this becomes your intro or fill. And you can decide to have it whenever you want. Also, if you do this, it's your intro. You can also have this to be uh, automatic by choosing here how many measures it will take for this to happen. Okay, so those are also the A and B variations. Oh, okay. So every four patterns it will play this. And here we can choose if it's A or B. I have not programmed anything in B.
I do prefer the manual, personally. I like it for this kind of stuff. I really like this, those big patterns. Okay, now we will talk about syncing. We have one pattern here, one pattern here. It's a mess. And that's why the Roland first invented DINSYNC. So we are going to start with DINSYNC as it's the one I trust the most. In many situations where I have the choice between MIDI and DINSYNC, I will use DINSYNC or any analog clock actually. They're usually just more reliable, I think. So I have this cable, which is a cable from Roland actually, and it does both MIDI and DINSYNC. Most classic MIDI cable do not work. So let's hook up this. So if you don't have the enclosure, you have just one DIN that does everything, whether it be output or input. So let's try here. Okay. I will set this one to sync out. So now when I play this, it's sending sync. In order to choose, oh, I'm going to be synced. Here, I press shift, which show me that I'm in internal. And now let's ask here to receive the sync. Magic. So let's say I want to do the same thing, but I want to use that big button instead. Didn't sync out from here. Didn't sync in for this one. Okay, magic. The reason I took this one is because it has the sync, but it also has MIDI. So we are going to try now. It works. So sync out from this MIDI out to here and you choose in. In. Success. There's no MIDI out from this, but there is on the enclosure here. So basically, either you slave it through MIDI, or you slave it to DINSYNC, or you can slave a DINSYNC equipment, but not all at the same time. Okay, so we still have to check the sync in. So I have the sync out of the blast beat here connected to the sync in. And to make it work, you have to go shift up to the sync in and press again until you have this. This does nothing because you have to press the start button. Uh, sometimes it's not perfect, so the best is to have a rhythmical element to help you pushing it at the right time. Ah. Yeah. It's not my favorite way to sing, for sure. The way it's most likely to be used, at least from my perspective, is in the context of modular synth. I just took a math here that I will use as a master clock. Yeah, you see? It 
Hey, it works quite well, and I guess you can build your, your patch around this. But mostly you can make weird clock. Like drunken style clock, like this. So you don't even need the shuffle here, you make the shuffle by modulating your clock. This can be actually quite interesting as you can sync other stuff out from the machine by those two trigger out jacks. And this is very fun. So I'm going to keep that set up here. And I'm going to add my GX3P that is off camera. Okay, so here we have my beloved GX3P. One of its nice features is that it has an internal sequencer. So I'm going to press right. And record a sequence of chords. Doesn't matter how bad you play it. Now I can press start. It will get more interesting once I get a small jack like this from the trigger output of the 880 and send one of those big jack to the sec trigger in here. I'll show you a picture. This jack will bypass the internal clock and we'll be able to control this from the 880. Okay, so I'm back here with my same math and 880 setup. I have the clock running a bit drunk. I love this. This is very stupid. Okay, and I have this little thing that's on the other side connected to the GX3P. We just trigger one. I have set trigger one to be the low conga. I will remove its sounds from now. I just want to listen to the thing here. It didn't work as I forgot to press start on the GX3P sequencer. This is interesting as even though the clock is all weird because of the math being modulated, this trigger always starts at the beginning of the sequence as it's being sent by the machine itself. We can add more of this. This is actually the way I use the Jinx Trippy all the time. Like sending clocks, I used to do it from the Yocto, or sometimes from modules in Eurac land. And you can do it from trigger two as well with something else, like a baseline or something, uh, any modular baseline generator. You can trigger the key step, by the way, with this, which I do quite a lot as well. To keep things short, I won't show you now. One thing I need to show you, in order to choose which instrument is doing the trigger, we need to go to manual play. This will decide if we are choosing for trigger one, or trigger two, A, shift, this, okay. Oh. So it display which one it is, like this. So let's go, for example, rim shot. Let's start a sequence again. Now if I come here with the rim shot. It works. I like to use sounds that I 
don't use that much, which makes it, this is one of the features that it's really cool to have the separate low tom and low conga. And uh, as you can really choose one of the sounds you know that you want to be using in the moment and use that as a trigger. Okay, so last but not least, we are going to talk about the rhythm track. What the rhythm track is, it's a way for you to chain sequences to make some sort of a song. And for that, I'm using the classic technique of triggering two instruments from the sync. So this one is still the GX3P, a new set of chords, a new sound. This one is triggering the key step. As I told you, if you set to the trigger input here, I have recorded a sequence and each trigger will advance one step in that sequence. If I go back to my pattern here, so the key step is triggering no coast. Trigger two, trigger one is the jig strippy. Okay, let's go to Compose. Let's delete this. Here you select the track, you can make 12 different tracks, I think. So let's select this one, then press play. Oh, this is important. You can change the bank of the pattern, but basically when you press start, it will play the first pattern of the first bank. But uh, I've found that if you change the bank before pressing start, it won't work. You will still be recording stuff from bank one. So start. Press this and choose the bank. I'm on the right one. Now, if you want one pattern to be put in memory, you just press shift. So it, it's simple as it's like this. This one will play four times. One, two, three, four. This one, two. This one, four. This one, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven, eight. Done. Let's go back to play and it should work. Magic. I forgot to reset this one. So it's starting at some weird moment in the sequence. But that's okay, it works. No, you can't mute things. So you don't have mute and uh, roll here in the song mode. But you can compose quite cool stuff, I think. And you can play with your synth. This is exactly how I've been working with my project called Repeat Eater, but using the Yocto instead of this one. Also, I must use to play the pattern manually instead of composing the rhythm tracks, but it's fun to know how to do it. Okay, we've reached the end. You can also make it loop. So yeah, if you want the entire thing to loop, you press Shift and then it will loop. I know it works, we won't verify it. It's quite cool to make long patterns, like with a lot of steps and a lot of variations that loop and you can select 12 of them. You can also edit here, but it's quite complicated. I prefer to keep the video short. Maybe I'll do a video just for this later on. Many thanks to Jeff from System Haiti for sending me this alongside some other stuff that I will do video about soon. It's been a pleasure to work with this and to make sound with this. Uh, thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe, like, comment if you have any questions. Make sure you check out my Patreon if you want some samples. There will be some samples this soon. And uh, you can also get some teaching out of me 
about whatever you want if it's music related. Thanks for watching. See you next time.